Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's been a while since I've posted a video um, here on YouTube. Uh, apologies for that, I had a bit of a hobby break uh, back end of last year. Um, I am back on it now though. Um, for those of you that follow me on Instagram, the Angry Dragon Inn is still coming along and uh, I will be starting that again after this uh, video. Um, this video is not a build video, it is a painting video. So I'm gonna show you how to paint this. This is my um, piece I've designed this uh, just this year, um, beginning of uh, 2023. Um, I made this on the back of uh, my sister's boyfriend's advent calendar. Um, it came, it looked like a house. I said, can I have the box? Got the box, made this. And this is going to be a backdrop for taking pictures of all my D&D minis when I get around to painting them. So um, this video is going to show you how I go about painting my stonework, my wooden beams, my shingles and a few extra bits and pieces. There'll be plenty of extra gubbins and some pigeons and a couple of rats and a load of uh, market stall stuff. So I'll uh, cut now and I'll go to zoom in on and show you what bits are available. Right, here it is in all its glory. Um, as you can see, we've got a couple of doors. These are from the old um, Citadel castle kits. I had a couple of spare, so I've used those. I made all the doors and windows myself. Um, I'm, I scratch about everything. The shingles are from a company I'll link down below. I can't remember their name, but it will come to me. I'll um, put it in the video somewhere. Um, I made the goods lift as well. Um, I, these resin barrels and crates will be added to the scene around the edges. Um, I made those a while ago and made my moulds for them. Um, I hollowed one of them out, so I'll be putting some water in that for a water butt. Uh, the pigeons are from another company who I will link below. I found those on eBay. They're pretty good scale. I use one on my windmill. And these um, little doodads, the pots. Um, well, there we go. There you are. The pots and everything these are from rok minis he's also on youtube instagram etc um i've not been paid to uh, advertise these he is a close personal friend of mine um, i help him out with a lot of shows um so i get a few bits and pieces every now and again um and they just have so happened to work really well for my D, &D stuff and uh, i can't make that stuff because it's too small so <clears throat> yeah you're going to see this and um, we've got a bit of sand going on the corner here and here this is just for the alleyways i've tried to make um cart tracks come through. Um, I've got a cart somewhere. Um, there it is. As you can see, it's here. This is built for the Angry Dragon Inn, but it'll work for anything. And I'll get a horse to fit that as well. So yeah, okay. Um, I'll bring you back when I started the painting. Undercoat first, I think. So um, as is uh, standard, it will be a Mod Podge um, Mod Podge matte black mix. So um, I just save an old tub as uh, all of us crafters do because um, we go through so much Mod Podge and I pour in some acrylic black. I use, because I'm in the UK, I use Dana Rowney graduate acrylic. Um, it's a really good pigmentation. Um, it's um, I find it way better than the cheap stuff from uh, like the pound shops and, uh, and that. Um, you pay a bit more for it, but you get a lot in this tube. It's 500 mil, um, and I got this from Hobbycraft um, on a on a sale, so I, I got a bit of discount. Um, but I just like the, um, the the tone of this black more than uh, any of the others. So poured a little bit into a cup. I'll um, stipple away. Let, um, I'll fast forward a portion of this video, and uh, I'll bring you back when it's sorted. I'll bring you back when this is all undercoated. Right, there we go. It's all undercoated in the Mod Podge Black. I only really do one coat, I think it only needs it. The tiles look like they need another one, but I think I'm probably, I'll probably just go over those with the slate gray. I think that will be fine because I'm gonna do some weathering underneath the edges anyway. Um, so yeah, um, that's all done. On to the uh, grey now for the stonework. Oh, let's crack on with that. Right, so for the grey on this one, I'm going to try Storm Vermin Fur um, from Citadel. I'm going to dry brush it over with the tank brush. Um, it'll be a bit of a wet brush actually, I'm just going to 
go like that. Keep leave all the um, black in the recesses as much as possible. Um, then I'll do successive dry brushes um, with Dawnstone uh, and then probably Administratum Grey. Nice and boring and simple. Um, but then afterwards, I will probably give it a quick dry brush right at the end with some Carrick Stone. So this is what we'll do. We'll go Storm Vermin Fur, Administratum Grey, Dawnstone, Carrick Stone, and then I will do some washes. I'm going to give it an Althonian camel, sh camo shade? Cam camel Shade, <laughs> Althonian Camo Shade in all of the very deepest recesses where it would have attracted moisture. An Agrax Earth Shade, again, it will be um, only under the eaves, around the door, um, under windows, etc., where dirt and that would have collected um, through dripping. I'm not going to give the whole thing a wash because that's a lot of wash. Um, on, on Next to the um, Othonian Camo Shade, I'll add in a tiny bit of Bale Tan Green once that's all done. Um, I'll do a time lapse of me doing some bits and pieces and uh, I'll bring you back when I'm done. Right, there we go. That's the Storm Vermin Fair all done. I think I've decided to do all base coats in this uh, section actually. So I'm gonna base coat the plaster and then the wood tile and then the tiles and then probably the wood. So I'll bring you back when I've uh, sorted the colors out for the plaster. Right, so the base color I'm gonna use for the plaster is Zandri Dust. I'll do a quick time lapse of that as well and I'll bring you back. There we go, I'll bring you back when all that is done. There we go guys, that is the base coat of Zandu Dust done on all the plaster. And now I'm going to move up to the tiles and do some Dark Reaper. We're going to go for slate tiles on this one because they're nice and thin. Um, and we're probably going to go for terracotta or red tiles over on this uh, peak over here. So slate for the main roof and red for the uh, pitched roof. Um, I'll do a time lapse of me just doing a bit of the Dark Reaper and I'll bring you back after that. There we go, I'll bring you back when the roof is done. Here we go, that's most of the base goats done. I've still got to do the wood beams. Um, so the um, the tiles were based in Dark Reaper from Citadel and the terracotta tiles on the pitch roof are based in Doomball Brown for now. Um, I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to make them look terracotta, but it will be probably involving Doomball Brown and a red mix and we'll go from there. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with it so far. I'm going to think about the colours for the beams and I'll come back to you in a second. Right. Now we've got all the undercoats done. I'm gonna do the wood last so I can get some washes down. I'm gonna go through uh, the brickwork and do the occasional bricks in Gawthor Brown, Mournfang Brown, and Steel Legion Trab. Um, just a couple of each, um, just to get it nice. And so it's not just completely gray all over. Once we've got those done, we can do some more highlights and I'll go over them again if I need to afterwards. Um, and then we'll move on to some plaster. I'll uh, do a little time lapse of me doing that shortly.
now we've added some bricks, I am going to go over it with a little layer of Agrax Earth Shade. Yes, I know I can make my own mix of shade, but I like this colour and I don't use very much at all. So I'm going to continue to use Agrax Earth Shade until I find a suitable mix that I like um, for the other buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and uh, I'll be back with you in a second. <laughs> There we go. The Agrax is uh, just drying, which is why it looks a bit glossy and sheeny at the moment, but I think it's going to be all right. So I'll do a dry brush of that with the base colour again after it's dry, and then we'll do progressive highlights after that. There will be then more spot highlight, spot dumbing, dulling down with more Agrax in the recesses underneath windows and where um, water would collect, because um, then we'll follow up with the green as well. But now I'm going to be dry brushing these progressively lighter colours um, are coming away from the sides and once that's dry brushed I'll do another Agrax down the sides as well just to get it looking dirtier basically. Um, right I'll come back to you in a sec. Successive dry brushes on the plaster. Um, one of them was Blade One Flesh, and the other one was Terminus Stone. Obviously, over a Zandri Dust base coat. So now I'm going to go around pretty much all the edges with a very thin down Agrax Earth Shade wash to give it a look of uh, kind of wet and worn, um, a bit of dirt collecting in the recesses, that kind of thing. And then I'll add a bit right in the corners of green and then an even lighter green right in the corners to show like um, a moss build up or something. So, yeah, I'll um, I'll time lapse this one and then I'll bring you back when the whole thing's done. Right, that's with the Agrax uh, shade in the corners, as you can see. It's a fairly large dis difference, um, so not having it. It looks old and worn and weathered. Um, it'll be even different now. Um, it'll be even uh, better when I put the green around the edges. It's a very, very subtle green tinge around the edges. Um, you can see that I was stippling the Agrax uh, shade around the edges here. So when you put it on, you get a very stark tide line. Um, if you stipple it while it's still wet, you can blend that tie line in really nicely with the dry brushed area before. I will be bringing the dry brush area back up a bit more with some um, more of the, what was the colour I've forgotten, sorry. Terminus stone, there we go. Um, just a tiny bit right in the middles, um, just to, you know, where the water wouldn't have gone. Um, I've also tried to be um, quite obvious of where I put the water tide marks coming down the sides here. So a bit of Agrax at the top there, just bring it down. And here and then again just stipple the bottom of that to blend it in keep the top nice just stipple the bottom you don't want to get tidal you don't want to you want to see the tide lines on the drips but you don't want to see it like, like it's been painted on if you know what i mean i appreciate it has of course um right i'll add the green in and i'll bring you back there we go i did the green i've done Athonian camo shade mixed one to one with Lamy and medium into the recesses, quite thick, um, just into really fine recesses, not over the Agrax Earth shade in the corner here, fine recesses, and then stippled it out again with my very well used dry brush. Very well used. I wonder if you can see what I've used that before. <laughs> and then after that, it doesn't have to necessarily be dry, 
I put a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of bale tan green right into the recesses here. You can see a bit there. You can see a different shade of green there as well. A tiny bit down the drips as well, just to give it a bit of variance so it doesn't look all the same. Um, and that just looks like it's uh, an older building with uh, a bit of water worn on it, as you would get. So um, I took the liberty of doing the rest of the Agrax uh, shade around the whole of the building. I'll follow that up with the green now and I'll bring you back. Right, there we go. That's the plaster uh, finished, I think. Um, I will add the rest of the brick detail first and then I'll do the roof and the wood beams. If I think it needs to pop a little bit more, I'll do another dry brush of terminus stone. But I'm quite pleased with the plaster. Zoom in to a look. So you can see the um, the bell tan green just gives the green, uh, the, the uh, damp patches just that little bit more um, variance of colour makes it look a little bit more believable. Um, yeah, quite pleased with that. It will look a lot different with the windows in and, and the beams painted, obviously. But for now, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm toying with doing a shop sign here, but I, I'm not sure yet. We'll see. You may see at the end of the video there's something there, but I won't be uh, painting freehanding that. No way. I'll be uh, printing that out on some paper and sticking it on with PVA glue and making it look old because I can't freehand. Right. I'll bring you back in a minute. There we go. I did the green. I've done Athonian Camo Shade, mixed one to one with Lamia Medium into the recesses, quite thick, um, just into really fine recesses, not over the Agrax Earth Shade in the corner here. Fine recesses, and then stippled it out again with my very well used dry brush. Very well used. I wonder if you can see what I've used that before. <laughs> And then after that, it doesn't have to necessarily be dry. I put a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of bale tan green right into the recesses here. You can see a bit there. You can see a different shade of green there as well. A tiny bit down the drips as well, just to give it a bit of variance so it doesn't look all the same. Um, and that just looks like it's uh, an older building with uh, a bit of water worn on it, as you would get. So um, I took the liberty of doing the rest of the Agrax uh, shade around the whole of the building. I'll follow that up with the green now and I'll bring you back. Right, there we go. That's the plaster uh, finished, I think. Um, I will add the rest of the brick detail first and then I'll do the roof and the wood beams. If I think it needs to pop a little bit more, I'll do another dry brush of terminus stone. But I'm quite pleased with the plaster. Zoom in to a look. So you can see the um, the bell tan green just gives the green uh, the the uh, damp patches just that little bit more um, variance of colour makes it look a little bit more believable. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. It will look a lot different with the windows in and, and the beams painted, obviously. But for now, I'm I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm toying with doing a shop sign here, but I, I'm not sure yet. We'll see. You may see at the end of the video there's something there, but I won't be. Uh, painting freehanding that no way i'll be uh printing that out on some paper and sticking it on with pva glue and making it look old because i can't freehand right i'll bring you back in a minute right i have made the decision to paint the wood trim first do an undercoat of dryad bark on the wood trim um just to try and get the plaster to pop a bit more i'm unsure if i'll go any further without doing the rest of the stonework as well off afterwards of course um but i'll get that wood painted and I will show you the difference. Um, I think it will make the plaster really pop. So give me a sec, I'll bring you back. There we go. Um, the time lapse won't tell you exactly how long that was, but that takes quite a while. Um, it's probably the most tedious job of of doing this. Um, you've got to get into all the nooks and crannies to make it look realistic. So I'm going to go around and do the rest of the wood 
and I'll bring you back when it's finished and show you what it looks like. Um, I'm quite pleased with the drier bark. I always struggle with painting the wood beams. I don't want to just go in with it with a dark and a light dry brush um, like I used to with my my bases and my miniatures. Um, but we'll see how this looks when, I, when we come back. See you in a minute. There we go. And um, that's the dryer bark down on the uh, wood. I think that makes the, um, the plaster pop a lot more. There will be a dry brush on that and uh, probably a, a little black wash to get to the recesses. I may do some variation of the dry brush on the doors as well. I'm, I'm going to paint all the windows frames the same colour as well um, and um, all the wood furniture as well. I've even done the doors there. So the next thing to do, I'm probably going to start dry brushing the bricks actually, so I'll bring you back in a minute. So I'm going to do some successive dry brushes now. I'm going to start with the original base coat of Storm Vermin Fur. I'll try my best to avoid the other coloured bricks for now, uh, but if need be I'll just go back over them afterwards. I want to work up my successive colours to uh, Dawnstone and then Administratum Grey. There will probably be some additional lighter colours on the edges and that, but I'll, I'll have a look at it when it's done. And then I'm going to add in some uh, washes, some more Agrax and some, some more green as well around the edges. Um, I'll bring you back. There we go, it's not really a great transitional change at all to the dry brushing of the original base colour. Um, but I'm going to go through the whole thing, dry brush the base, the mid and the light tone, and I'll bring you back. There we go, successive dry brushes um, from Storm Vermin Fur to Dawnstone to Administratum Grey, all in the Citadel layer range. Um, I'm going to add some weathering now with some Agrax and some... Uh, oh, What's it? I forget what it's called. Beltane Green and Althonian Camo Shade. So I'll add some of that. We'll see how that goes. And then I might do another Administratum Grey. And I'm thinking it might need a Celestra Grey just on the out, out, outer edges and some of the other bricks. Um, but I'll bring you back in a sec. There we go, successive shades of Agrax Earth Shade, Elthonian Camo Shade and Beltang Green um, into the recesses and where water would drip down there, um, underneath here, around the stone archway, right across the bottom of the whole thing, splash back up off the pavement. Similar thing to the plaster, only you can see it more on the plaster because it's a lighter colour. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I'm not too sure about doing another dry brush on it. I think I quite like the dark look of it, but we'll get the wood and the shingles done before we decide to do that anyway. Um, so I think I'm going to start having a look at the wood now. I'll, uh, I'll bring you back in a sec. Right, so I've skipped a little bit ahead here. Um, I took a look at the wood. Um, I, well, I, I dry brushed it with a Carrick stone. Um, and then I took a look at it and I didn't really like it, so I dumbed it down with some Nuln oil. Uh, and then I still didn't like it, so I added a very, very thin wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. And that's where you get the nice colour from here. Uh, let me just zoom in and show you. So I think I'm happy with that. I might do a couple of dry brushes on the end of it once I'm done. Um, but I'm happy with that wood at the moment. It wouldn't be too bright anyway if it's a damp area like I'm trying to show with this um, scene. Um, I also took the liberty of just undercoating the base and uh, doing the cobbles exactly the same way as I did the stone, same colours. But I have also added in a lot more different variations of shade in spots all over. I just dripped it on and uh, mixed it in a little bit. Um, I will be adding in some grass tufts and some moss around the edges here and there. They'll be doing mud patches on the sides as well. So not far to go. So shingle work, um, metal work on the uh, windows, 
and on the shutters and, and then the two doors. Bit of mud and uh, we're nearly done. Um, I'm probably going to tackle the shingles last. So I'm probably going to crack on with some detail work on the windows and the doors. And then I'll probably do this mud next as well. I've decided to do um, a wash on the shingles. I'm doing an Agrax Earth shade first. Um, because they're layers of shingles, they won't have the same properties as just lining on, a, on like a miniature. So the wash will go underneath them. But I'm gonna try and get it in the recesses to the top of the tile and below the bottom one if I can. Um, yeah, so I'm then gonna probably dry brush with downward strokes only with the original blue and then do progressively lighter blues. I'm probably gonna do some stippling as well, but I will use some moss um, tufts that I've got to hide some of the sins without a doubt. Um, I'm gonna do the same on the, on the brown side as well. Probably give that another coat of brown first though. Um, but yeah, so I'll uh, do a little bit of a time-lapse because I know you like those um, and I'll bring you back, cheers. I finished the Agrax Earth shade uh, all over coat on the tiles. Um, it doesn't look great at the moment because yeah, it's not pulling in the recesses, um, but it's there. So I'm gonna wait for that to dry and I'm gonna do some dry brushing. Um, I'm gonna leave him from the top down. So hopefully leave some into the ridges, um, some dark in the ridges. Um, I'm yet to decide what colors I'm gonna dry brush if I'm honest. Um, I'll have a look through and I'll come back to you in a second and let you know. So the roof tiles ended up being a, a dry brush session um, and we used the Dark Reaper, then the Fang, and then Rust Grey. Um, it doesn't really show in this light, but it is quite a stark contrast between the top and the bottom of the tiles. Um, I am going to go through it with some Agrax down the edges at the top again, and I'm going to do some spots of green underneath the tiles where I'm going to add some moss to it. I still realise I need to do this piece of wood here. Um, and then we've got the terracotta tiles, which were Mournfang, or oh, they weren't, they were Doombull Brown, then dry brushed with Mournfang, and then dry brushed with Ratskin Flesh. And then after that, probably a mistake, I did a very thin Cassandra Yellow over the top. Um, I'm not sure, I mean, I think it's okay. Um, we'll see. Um, so I'm just going to do some green on both of them. Um, and then the roof's done. Uh, and then it's literally just the metallics, the doors and the peripherals. And it's nearly done. Well, I'm looking forward to getting this finished. Right, that's the baseboard finished. I did the dirt using a base coat of Zamizi Desert. Then an Agrax Earth Shade Wash. I allowed that to dry. Dry brushed again with some easy desert and uh, and then Zandri dust at the end. Um, I took it out into the um, the courtyard as well, just some dirt tracks and stuff uh, where the dirt would have been eventually ground in over time. Uh, I think it looks okay. Um, I've added some grass tufts. Um, I I am not going to list the grass tufts I use because I use so many. I've got a full drawer of just grass tufts. It's just full. I am. Um, some of them are Games Workshop, some of them are loads of other, loads and loads of other manufacturers. I get them and test them out and I never stick them down just on their own. I always super glue them in place as well. So there are many, many different suppliers on here um, and I don't know whose is whose. So I'm not going to say which ones I've used, um, <clears throat> but that's the base done. Um, uh, I'm going to add the building to it and do some final shots for you because I finished off all the details. Um, but I'll go through those colours when I can show you the whole thing um, together. So give me a second and I'll bring you back with the full thing. Here you go. Here's the whole thing all put together. Um, I did all the, f I finalised all the details. So I'll do a whole through run through shot. So I did the wood on the top. I went through all the over brushing as well on the dry brush. The lift is in. As you can see, the lift, the wood on the lift was painted exactly the same way I painted all the other woods. Um, the rope was actually given a coat 
of flayed one flesh and then an agrax earth shade uh, and then that i left it um because rope would be just dirty i did undercoat the rope with a mod podge mix as well just to make it slightly stiffer so it's not super stringy um the windows and all the metallic bits like on the door etc they all um got a coat of lead belcher with a agrax wash and then i did a very 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 thin doom ball brown wash around the rivets and uh, let that streak down for weathering again um i've added some moss to the roof i'm probably going to add a bit more over time but just at the moment i'm happy with how it looks just a little bit of build up you can see where i put the the green tinges on the roof as well um yeah i think that looks okay where the big bits of green are i will probably eventually add some extra bits in um, I'll bring you back in a second and we'll do a tour through the whole thing. Hi, right, here we go. I've just done a little bit of set dressing with some previously painted barrels and some crates, just to get an idea. Um, don't laugh at the crates, they're massively overscale. I designed them for 40k, so they're heroic scale. Did those a while ago, but the barrels work. There's a figure in there as well to get a sense of scale. Um, I've uh, all the pieces you see in the, some of the beginning shots, uh, the bottles and everything. Um, I've got literally hundreds of pieces to paint for when the village comes out properly. Um, so I'm going to do those all at once. But as I said earlier, you can get those from our ROK minis. There'll be a link in the description. Um, again, not being paid for this. Um, he's a really good friend of mine. And, uh, you know, if you can't help your friends out, what's the point? So I'm going to shut up now um, and do a zoom in shot and just get you to see all the details and the close ups of the paintwork and uh, all the little sins that you can't really see on the zoomed out shots. Um, it's not perfect, but I'm really pleased with it. The realism in the paint's um, really good, I think. Um, that sounds a bit big-headed, but I, I I really like it. So, yeah, thanks, guys. I'll do some fancy-dancy shots at the end as well, probably with a black cloth or something. Um, but all right, I'll shut up. Cheers. Hey guys, so there you have it, uh, my photo backdrop for uh, my miniatures. Um, it will also probably serve part of the village when it's all done. Um, I've started working on the new house already. Um, I had a bit of time before I could get working on the uh, Angry Dragon Inn, so I started working on another small house uh, based on one of my followers on Instagram. They showed they tagged me in one of their builds, um, so I took the inspiration from that. Um, yeah, I'm super pleased with how it's turned out. I wasn't 100% sure on the shingles. Um, I do really like the laser cut shingles though and I will be getting some more um, now that I know how to paint them and I can paint them fairly decently. There are a couple of things I probably will change in the future, like the different colours and stuff. I quite like the blue. I'm not sure if I need to give it a better contrast or not because you can't really see in this light. I mean, I've got my daylight lamp set up here, so that's how I paint. The, um, oh, what's it called? Terracotta, thank you. Um, the terracotta, I'm not a fan of, so I probably won't do that again. I'll probably do that brown next time. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm super happy with it. Um, this is probably my fifth or sixth full build, um, my third full paint job. That's it. I haven't painted the rest of it. I've got two houses still to paint, the bridge still to paint. That bridge video will be coming. That will be a nice quick paint job, so I will finish that off. Um, so the bridge video is uh, one of my build processes um, on uh, YouTube here. Um, so yeah, the um, couple of questions you might have is why is there a gap in here and in here? Um, I'm going to eventually get some pers um, get some clear plastic and sand the back of it and put a, a fake tea light candle in there for batteries so you can see a flickering light. 
so it looks like somebody's in the shop. I also wanted to put some candles on a like a window shelf on the inside once they're all painted but again that involves painting all those little tiny bits which I will do eventually. Um, but yeah I'm super happy. Um, once this is done we're, and I painted another house and the bridge and everything I'll probably do a showcase video or for, for YouTube um, to show everything that I've currently painted and finished and uh, get it look, to look nice. The next idea I've had after the Angry Dragon Inn um, and, and after this little house here, this little house I'm probably just going to build and paint it black and uh, finish and then paint everything at once. But after the Angry Dragon Inn, the project I've, I've wanted to do for quite a while, it won't be fully detailed interior because there'll be a lot going on outside, um, is a blacksmith come watermill. Um, so there'll be a big wooden watermill with a piece of um, river on the, on one side and then there'll be a living quarters upstairs and then downstairs there'll be a little stable for his horse and uh, there'll be also a, a little bit outside a big chimney and a forge and everything and anvils. Um, lots of detail work to put into that. Um, I'm, I used to be averse to using small 3D prints. Uh, I'm not anymore. Um, I thought I could make everything myself. I can't. Um, and there are better people than me out there that do this and uh, they can sculpt in 3D. I can sculpt a little bit in 3D, but not as well as they can. And if they're willing to let other people print it and uh, me buy it, then so be it. I can do this. Um, I'll leave them to do that and I will include their bits in my work. And where appropriate, I will always tag whoever work I've used, whatever products I've used, etc. So, yeah, thanks very much for, for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, again, it's obviously the algorithm. Like and subscribe if you want to. If you think I deserve you subscribing, please do. If you don't, it's it's fine. I don't mind at all. Um, I have a full-time job. It's not like I rely on this for money, so don't worry about that. Um, yeah, thanks very much, guys. Catch you in the next video.